So as the monster taming genre grows and continues to expand its reach, we really are seeing some game studios within it starting to really cement themselves as pillars for this niche. Plenty of games within the genre are in development, some have released, but these specific studios are dedicated to making future monster taming titles, which to me means that they're really the future of the genre, especially on the indie side of things, as the indie community has been those spearheading the monster taming games forward. In this video, I'm going to discuss who these developers are and why you should support them now and moving forward. So with all that said, make sure to sit back, relax, and let's dive right in. Okay, so one thing I've noticed is that a lot of games within the genre that do come out are either vague about a potential sequel or next venture within the same genre, or the devs will just state clearly that they're going on to new things, which, listen, that's totally great. I don't want any devs to think that they have to keep pumping out monster taming games. You do what you love and what makes you happy. That's what it's all about. I'm sure many fans from previous projects will follow you on your journey, and I wish anybody that does go this route the best of luck and much fortune. Now that said, as a monster taming channel and enthusiast, I think it's important to to know which studios and development teams do have long-term plans for the genre so that we can understand what the future will look like and how we can help it grow and expand. I'm going to mention each studio and their games and do note that this is based off of the information that I currently have and is public to my knowledge as well as my perspective on it. There very well could be other devs that are planning on continuing their monster taming journey that I missed, but to me these seem like the studios that come to mind due to their amazing game design and widespread appeal as a result. I will leave social media for all of these games mentioned mentioned linked below if you want to check it out and I highly recommend following them. So first up should be no surprise to anyone and that's the Nexomon team. The first Nexomon installment launched back in 2017 before the big monster taming boom three years later and even still before this they had a prequel to Nexomon called Micromon that launched in 2014. Nexomon Extinction came in 2020 and we know that Nexomon 3 is in the works. If we go by the last eight years of patterns it may be a 2023 thing but there's no concrete evidence for that other than the fact that they've come up with a game every three years. Nexomon hit really hard especially for those who weren't privy to monster taming games and other Pokemon-esque experiences. With Nexomon 3 being essentially the fourth installment in the series, I think it's safe to say that Nexomon is here to stay. Next, we have a non-Pokemon-like experience that has an insane amount of polish, awesome pixel art, and great mechanics, that being Monster Sanctuary and Morai, the team behind it. Now, what's a little bit different here is that Moirai has stated that they're open to the idea of a Monster Sanctuary 2. However, they're currently working on a brand new IP within the genre that'll be a top-down roguelike with new 3v3 combat. Judging by how good Monster Sanctuary systems are, I'm pretty excited to see this new game and how it plays out. The devs are currently working on a free DLC update for Monster Sanctuary, which just further shows that level of dedication. I think it's no secret at this point that Coromon was a really big hit, at least within the genre. We haven't seen the sales numbers for Steam yet, nor have we seen the game release on mobile or Switch, but even so, it's definitely sending shockwaves through the community. Now, quick spoiler warning, nothing major, but in the end game, there is dialogue teasing Coromon 2. I won't get too much into it here, but yes, the team over at Tregsoft is looking to join the fray, much like Nexomon, and becoming a staple monster taming franchise that hopefully will exist for many years to come. I've been thoroughly enjoying making content on this game for you guys, and I'm honestly hyped for the sequel, despite the fact that it likely won't come for another few years at the very least. We got mobile and Switch ports on the way, so no need to rush. I think another future release that i definitely like to see get more attention, and I'm hoping to help facilitate this, is the Disc Creatures franchise. Now, if you don't know, the original came out just before I started making monster taming content here on YouTube back in 2019. The game featured a Game Boy Color-esque aesthetic, with it seemingly taking inspiration from Dragon Quest monsters in terms of the battles, at least by the looks of it. I haven't played it myself, but plan to in preparation for the sequel. Anyway, speaking of which, the game dubbed Disc Creatures World is a sequel with more of a GBA aesthetic, and it looks really good. This is yet another developer that decided to stick around and honestly, I think they deserve a lot more support. So like I said, their Twitter is linked below. Definitely follow them. I've been showcasing them in Monster Tamer News' rapid fire segment for quite some time at this point, and I'm really looking forward to seeing more from them. So those are the devs that I'd consider really dedicated and that I think will be major pillars through the future of the genre, but I do have some honorable mentions here and some devs that also could very well be pillars. First, we got the Cyrillum franchise, which I'm not sure if Cyrillum Ultimate is going to be the final installment or if we could see a Cyrillum 5 or another monster taming title, but they're definitely deserving of a spot on this list if that is the case, because Zack is a pioneer of the indie monster taming development scene. The only reason it's not a main one on the list is just because I don't know what the future of the franchise holds. We also have Evo Creo, 
with the second installment releasing sometime this year, although I do think that they're held back a little bit by just being mobile exclusive, lacking PC or console ports. That said, they likely will be the most significant mobile only indie taming game moving forward. We also have Monster Crown, which I know the dev is really dedicated to the genre, but we haven't had any official confirmation on anything just yet. Temtem's another interesting case because by the looks of it, there aren't any plans, at least as of now, for any major post launch updates like new Temtem or new islands. I think they're just going to be adding features and stuff like that. I do doubt that Temtem 2 is going to end up being a thing, but if it is, then they could also see themselves being cemented. And finally, last but not least, I don't know if Byton Studio is planning on staying in the genre. Their first title was a Zelda-like, but if they do, I definitely could see them becoming another major pillar alongside the previously mentioned. I personally think Cassette Beast will be big, and if not, I plan on perpetuating it because it looks dope. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Was there anybody I missed? What other indie development studios do you think would play a major role in the future of the genre? Definitely let me know in the comments below. And if you did enjoy the video or are just a monster taming fan, make sure to subscribe to the channel. You can also check out my Twitter, my Discord, my Patreon, all links below. Special thanks to the patrons, especially Steel Case, Jim Hamilton, Dro Ghost, and Dark Persona. And with that, we'll see you guys next time. Peace.